All right, week 13 above the numbers, and we brought it back. Dots and Deal are back again. <laughs> and with that said, I'm going to give you the honors, Paulie. Well, David, I'm going to go with Kenny Galladay. All right. Now, we saw last week he got targeted seven times, and that's only the third time this year he's been targeted at least seven times in a game. Now, the thing is, Miami blitzes 37% of the time, which is the most in the National Football League, which means your hot reads are critical. A guy like him with a three-inch height advantage on Xavier Howard, the two-time Pro Bowl corner, who likes to play tight but can't because they are so heavy with their blitz. He's given up a career-high six touchdown passes this year, and he will shadow Galladay for most of the day. I think this is a good pick. I think it's a great pick. Actually, you and I were aligned because that was my first one, but I had to give you the honors with Kenny Galladay for the same exact reason. If this defense for the Miami Dolphins want to run that blitz cover zero look up front, number one, it's going to create those hots and sights, and number two, it's going to create one-on-ones on the outside. With the increased number of targets to Kenny Galladay, especially in the red zone last week, that's where he can come up big for this Giants offense. But I got to go to the defensive side of the ball. We're talking about Miami. We're talking about South Beach. I'm talking about sexy Dexter Lawrence. The reason why I want Dexter Lawrence to play above the X's and O's in this game is because we know that with the Miles Gaskin run, it's all about being balanced to build off of the play action passing. And when you have a left guard in Austin Jackson, who is a former first round pick at tackle, playing guard for the first time in his career, the size advantage and the strength through Dexter Lawrence, being able to compress that pocket against a 6-1 quarterback in Tua, Dexter Lawrence has to play above the numbers. You know, he might be able to do some damage here because Eichenberg is playing left tackle at this point, and Jackson, as you said, is playing left guard. Between the two of them, they have combined to draw 18 penalty flags, David. Aren't you guys supposed to be allergic to those things on the offensive line? (laughs) But 18. And let's not forget, Eichenberg's given up seven and a half sacks, which is the most in the National Football League. Jackson's only given up a half, but you have to believe that since Lawrence is going to be on their side, yep. he can take advantage of them. No doubt about it. And last but not least, the player that we need to keep below the numbers is Miles Gaskin. You and I were talking about it. They run this to be balanced on the offensive side of the ball and for Tua to build off of the play action passing game, just like last week, force this into the arm of Tua. You know, Gaskin's average is less than four yards a carry. His long Long is only 20. He's not a breakaway back. He's averaging less than a yard and a half of average yards per contact, which means he's not going to break too many tackles either. Here's the thing. Don't let him get going. Because if he does, that does open up the play-action pass. Stifle them. They haven't been able to run the ball very much, even though over the last month or so, he's running the ball three times more than he did prior to that as they've tried to compile some wins. They got four in a row. And that's it. So that is our Week 13 Dots and Deal Above the Numbers. 